Hello students, welcome to the channel. In today's video, we would look at matrices. This is a topic tested on ACT math, but not on SAT. So if you're taking the SAT, you can skip this video. For those taking the ACT, let's begin. So what is a matrix? A matrix is basically a collection of numbers arranged in a row and a column. So it's a bunch of rows and columns. For example, A, B, C, D. This is a two by two matrix because it has two rows, which is the first number, and it has two columns, the second number. Let's say I write one, three, two, one, four, negative one. Then this is a three by two matrix because it has three rows and it has two columns. So any matrix when written as an M by N matrix indicates that it has M rows and N columns. Now, when I write a number outside the matrix, this is called a scalar product, which means that every element of the matrix is multiplied by that number. So when I say two multiplied by one, two, three, four, that gives me the matrix uh, two, four, six, and eight. Every element is multiplied by two. And so when I say three multiplied by two, one, negative one, negative two, it gives me the matrix six, three, minus three, and minus six. Again, every element is multiplied by that number. Now, how do I add two matrices? I can only add two matrices when they have the same degree. That is to say they have the same number of rows and the same number of columns, right? So the degree M by N needs to be the same. So two, four, six, eight needs to be added to six, three, minus three and minus six. So I'll add numbers respectively. So two plus six is eight, four plus three is seven, six minus three is three, and eight minus six is two. So my answer is eight, seven, three, two, which is option G. Okay. Question two, what is the determinant of the matrix shown below? So a matrix in which M is equal to N is called a square matrix. That is when the rows and columns are equal in number, it's a square matrix. And you can find the determinant of this matrix uh, in this way. So if it's a two by two matrix of the kind A, B, C, D, then the determinant is a number given by uh, A, D, minus BC. So you multiply A and D, and from that you subtract the product of B and C. So in this case, the determinant would be uh, 8 into negative 2 minus, uh, one second, minus 3 into negative 5. Uh, A into D, 8 into negative 2, minus B into C, 3 into negative 5. So that's minus 16 plus 15, and that's negative 1, option C. Okay, let's move on. Now, here you have an equation presented as a matrix, and you're supposed to find the value of x. And you can see that the this matrix, if I multiply the scalar product, would be 8, negative 2, 2x, and 6. And when I add 3, 3, 1, and 0, then 8 plus 3, 11, minus 2 plus 3, 1. 2x plus 1 is given as 9, and 6 plus 0 is given as 6. So I need to only look at 2x plus 1 equal to 9. This term, when added to this term, gives this term. So 2x is 8, so x is 4. So the answer for x in this question is 4. Okay. 
Now we are looking at product. How do you multiply two matrices? So if you have uh, a matrix of order M by N, and you have another matrix of order N by P, you can only multiply them in that case, which means the product of two matrices is possible. Let's say this is matrix A and this is matrix B. Then the product A times B is only possible when the number of columns in A is equal to the number of rows in B, right? M by N denotes the degree of the first matrix where N is the number of columns. N by P denotes the degree of the second matrix where N is the number of rows and they have to be equal. And you get the final product matrix of order M by P. So the number of rows of the first one and the number of columns of the second one is what the order of the final matrix is. Now, why is that? How does this happen? Let's say I have a matrix, one, two, three, four, six, seven. This is a two by three matrix, right? I will have to multiply it with a matrix that is three times something. Let me say three times two. Three because the number of columns here is three. So the number of rows for the second matrix has to be three. So I will take it as minus one, zero, four, four, five, minus two. So I have a two by three matrix and a three by two matrix. And now my answer, as I told you, will be a two by two matrix. The number of rows from the first one, the number of columns from the second one. Now, how does that happen? You have to do pairwise products and follow closely. One for the first place here, one multiplies with negative one, two multiplies with zero, and six multiplies with four, and you add those three. So what do you do? One times negative one plus two times zero plus six times four. So negative one plus zero plus 24, which is 23. So the first position is 23. Now the second position, for this you do one multiplied by four plus two multiplied by five plus six multiplied by negative two. So you see how these pairwise products are happening. So that's four plus 10 minus 12, that's two. So the second position here is two. Now coming to the second row of the product matrix, I'll start with three. Three multiplied with negative one, plus four multiplied with zero, plus seven multiplied by four. So that's negative three plus zero plus 28, which is 25. So this is 25. And the last element here would be three multiplied by four plus four multiplied by five plus seven multiplied by negative two, which is 12 plus 20 minus 14, which is 18. And so you get your product matrix, right? And now you can see why we needed the columns in this first matrix to be equal to the rows in the second matrix, because only then can this pairwise product work, right? Because I'm multiplying one with negative one. So I'm taking the first row and the first column, first row of the first matrix, first column of the second matrix. And there, from there, I'm building my product matrix. Okay, so let's do this question. Um, four matrices are given below. Which of the following matrix product is undefined? Okay, so let me quickly write the order. This is two by two. This is two by two. This is two by three. And this is three by two. Okay, Wx. Wx is 
going to be defined because two and two, wy, wy is going to be defined because two and two, yz, yz is going to be defined because three and three, xw, xw. So if I say xw, then I have to write two by two for x and two by two for w. So again, defined xz. So xz is two by two for x and three by two for z. And since these are not equal, this product will not be defined, right? So the answer here is k. Okay, which of the following matrices is equal to the matrix product given here? So let's do this. So we have two, negative five, negative three and four, which is a two by two matrix. And we multiply that with two and negative one, which is a two by one matrix. So my answer would be a two by one matrix, right? Two by one matrix, meaning it would have just a one column with two rows. So what is the value here? Two into two, plus minus five into negative one, which is four plus five. So that's nine, nine comes here. What about this place? Minus three into two plus four into negative one, which is minus six minus four. So that's minus 10. So nine and minus 10, option E is my answer. Okay, which of the following augmented matrices represents a system of linear equations below? Now, when we talk about an augmented matrix, we are basically saying that I have a two by two matrix here, and I have a two by one matrix here, and I get a two by one matrix as the product. And here I have the variable set x and y, I have a1, uh, a2, b1, b2, and here I have c1 and c2. So I can say a1x plus b1y will be c1, right? Because that's how the product works. And a2x plus b2y would be c2. So this is how an augmented matrix can be used to denote a system of linear equations. So I would have three, five, two, and negative one, three, five, two, and negative one. And for this, I would have 20 and nine. This line indicates that this is the partition which represents the uh, column matrix of variables X and Y. So three, five, two, and negative one, and 20 and nine, right? Three, five, two, and negative one, and 20 and nine, which is why option G is the answer. So you can see here that you, when you go from um, the concept of product matrices, you are able to kind of represent other uh, concepts like linear equations, which is what this question was about. So this is the kind of questions you will see from matrices on ECT. Uh, hope this exercise was useful. Uh, if it was, hit like and subscribe to the channel. Let me know what other topics you'd like me to upload in future videos. I'll see you guys soon. Take care. Bye-bye.